Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret, <clears throat> and last time we began a new book of the Bible, the Gospel of Mark, and we made it through the first eight verses of chapter one, so we'll pick it up in verse nine in a minute. I'll give you a chance to get your Bible and open it up to Mark chapter one. The Scripture Verse by Verse website is found at thebibleversebyverse.com. There you can do exactly what we're going to do today, and that is study the Bible with me, verse by verse. Because there, at thebibleversebyverse.com, you will find archives of every single scripture verse by verse going back 37 years, which means there are four complete series going on five, all there for you. You choose the series, the book of the Bible, the chapter, the section, click listen. All you need to bring is your Bible and a hunger for God's word to the Bible, verse by verse dot com. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth in Jesus name. Amen. So Mark chapter 1, verse 9. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Notice that it says that Jesus was baptized. But it does not say that he confessed his sins like everyone else who was baptized by John. That's because Jesus did not have any sins to confess. Jesus went through the ritual of baptism because it was ordained by God. And it was the proper thing for a godly man in Israel to do at that time. But he didn't need to be baptized because he was already fully dedicated to the Father. But Jesus was identifying himself with the ministry of John the Baptist who was sent from God. And that was important to give him that support. Jesus stood by the faithful preacher. There are so many unfaithful preachers in the world today. So many modern evangelical preachers so-called and pastors so-called who are in it for money, who are in it for position, who are in it to get a bigger church or whatever the case might be to draw attention to themselves with their silliness or their intellectual prose and just ridiculous. There's so much garbage out there watering down the word. Jesus would not have supported them, but he did support John the Baptist. 10. And straightway, coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens opened and the Spirit, like a dove, descending upon him. So the moment that Jesus came up out of the water, the Spirit of God began to descend upon him in the form of a dove. Verse 11. And there came a voice out of heaven saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. I got to back up and say something about the dub, dub, dove being a symbol of the Holy Spirit. You know, the dove is, has to be the most passive bird that God has ever created. The dove would never force himself on anyone. Not aggressive, just the opposite. And there's a reason why God picked the dove to be a picture of the Holy Spirit. It's because the Holy Spirit in Christians is there to guide and teach and to tell us when we've done something wrong by making us feel guilty. But the Holy Spirit 
is passive in that he will never force you to do something. I had a Pentecostal tell me a while back, this, she went to some church, Pentecostal church, the Spirit of God came upon me and knocked me flat on my back, and I tried to get up, but I couldn't because the Spirit of God kept me from getting up. That's not the Spirit of God. If that's a spirit of anything, it's a spirit of a devil, but it's not the Spirit of God. Oh, the Spirit, spirit of God came upon me, and I started speaking in tongues, and I couldn't help it. That's not the Spirit of God. That same woman said, not only did the Holy Spirit knock me down and not let me get up, but then finally, after a while, I finally got up, and I tried to read the Bible, and the Spirit of God blurred my eyes. My Lord, how stupid can you be? How biblically ignorant can anyone be who calls himself a Christian and who had been a Christian for years? Well, that's what you get for going to charismatic Pentecostal churches. Ignorance. That's not the Spirit of God. God the Father chose the dove to be symbolic of the Spirit of God because he is passive. He doesn't force you to do anything. Now, let's, I did have to say that. Verse 11, there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. <clears throat> so, the audible voice, <clears throat> excuse me, of God the Father spoke from heaven, telling John the Baptist and everybody else who was there, and there was a crowd, telling everyone that Jesus was his Son and that he was pleased with him. And the reason that God the Father was pleased with his son is because his son never committed a sin. And that's what pleases God. You don't have to be talented. You don't have to be good looking. You don't have to be popular to, to have God be pleased with you. Just be holy and confess when you fail. Verse 12 and immediately the Spirit driveth him into the wilderness. Now, this may take us by surprise because why would the Holy Spirit lead anyone into the wilderness? Why would the Holy Spirit lead anyone into an unpleasant place like the wilderness, especially the Son of God, who God the Father was pleased with? So why is the Holy Spirit leading Jesus into the wilderness if God the Father is so pleased with him? Well, sometimes the Holy Spirit does that to us as well because it's a time of testing, which is what is going to be happening right here with God's Son. Sometimes the Holy Spirit leads us in the place that is not pleasant. It's a time of testing. 13. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tested by Satan, and was with the wild beast, and the angels ministered unto him. Jesus inaugurates his ministry. First thing he does, because his ministry began officially when he was baptized. That was the beginning of his three plus years of ministry. And he began it with a time of testing and suffering for 40 days. Jesus fasts and he prays and he seeks God. All the while that Satan is doing battle with him by tempting him. But the angels of God were ministering to Jesus at the same time that Satan was tempting him. 14. Now after John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. John the Baptist was put into prison because he preached the word of God. And he did not water it down. But that's why he was here on earth. And he fulfilled his call. I know 
There may be many reasons for me to be here on earth, but I know the big overriding reason for the last 40 years or so has been to proclaim the Word of God. I have no doubt about that. No doubt. That's the big reason why I am here. And it is my job to give out the whole counsel of God. I know that also. It is my job to deliver the Word of God without watering it down, which I have never done in 37 years of Scripture verse by verse, not one single time. And that's not an empty boast. That's not a boast at all. It's just a fact. Like Walter Brennan used to say in The Guns of Will Sonnet, no brag, just fact. And you go back, listen to four complete series going back those 37 years at the thebibleversebyverse.com. Choose any and you'll see, <coughs> excuse me, that I never dot water down a single solitary verse of Scripture because I'm on earth to do that to proclaim God's word. And by the grace of God, I will fulfill my call until the day that he calls me home. And that's why John the Baptist was here. And that's why he was in jail. Because he would not water down the word of God. And many of the people, including the king, many of the people in the upper levels of government, including the king himself, did not like John. Oh, many people in the upper levels of the religious hierarchy in Judaism didn't like John either because they couldn't control him. He didn't listen to what they said. He called them to repentance. He was there proclaiming the word of God. And of course, King Herod despised John because John preached against Herod's personal sin, called him out. So Herod put John in prison. Because he was preaching against sin, including Herod's sin. And of course, Herod didn't like that too much. He was stepping on his toes. The Word of God was stepping on his toes. Well, I don't want to step on anybody's toes. But if the Word of God that I proclaim steps on your toes, that's your problem. That's between you and God. I'm not going to worry about it. <clears throat> so anyway, John's in prison. Jesus moves from the south where he had been and where John had been baptizing to the north. Well, he's where he will spend most of his time the next three years ministering the word of God. 15, <clears throat> and saying, this is what Jesus said when he started preaching, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. And I'm going to point it out every single time I see it because the modern evangelical pastors refuse to use the word repent. Or if they do use it, they quickly add it has nothing to do with sin. You just change your mind about who Jesus is. You know, I used to not believe that he's the son of God. Now I believe he's the son of God. There, I repented. No, you did not repent. That's not repentance. Repentance everywhere in Scripture from the beginning to the end, every single solitary time is connected to turning away from sin, not just changing your mind about who Jesus is. What a bunch of garbage. What a bunch of evangelical, mushy garbage designed not to rub anybody the wrong way. Jesus says, time for you to repent. Time for you to have faith in the gospel which is that Jesus will die on the cross to pay for your sins. That's how you get saved. So Jesus is preaching repentance just like John did and just like the apostles will and just like I have been and just like most modern evangelicals won't touch with a 10-foot pole because, you know, that's not cool. Hmm. Who cares? We'll stop there for today. Study all of God's word with me at the thebibleversebyverse.com. If you'd like to be a part of Scripture verse by verse, you can be by praying for me and God's word. That makes you an immediate and very important part of this ministry. Also, when you take a break from studying with me at the thebibleversebyverse.com, go to the front page, click the donate button, 
and prayerfully give us. The Lord may lead. That also makes you a part of this ministry. See you next time on Scripture Verse by Verse. Until then, so long.